Hello friends and welcome to this session on Newton's laws of motion. So till now we were discussing about various types of forces and hence we concluded that uh, Sir Isaac Newton came up with his famous three laws of motion. But before we take up laws of motion given by Sir Isaac Newton, it is also important to understand what happened before Newton. So who all were there, who all scientists were there who have given uh, laws of motion and what was world following till then till 1642 as in the year when Newton born and it was late 1660s when Newton came up with his uh, laws of motion. So before that what was happening is what we are going to discuss in this session. So uh, there was a there was a philosopher named Aristotle right and uh, he was uh, a Greek and he existed in 4th century BC. So he was from 384 to 322 BC. Just a trivia for you, Aristotle was also the teacher of uh, Alexander. So the famous king of uh, Greece, right? So he was the person who was a philosopher. He was a, you know, he was a polymath basically. So he was an engineer, a philosopher, a physicist and all at that point in time. And he came up with his laws of motion from the observations which we ha he had around the uh, around him at that point in time so this is we are talking about 4th century bc now uh, what was his laws of motion and what was elements of his laws of motion so let's discuss that so what he thought was uh, the substances making up the earth were different from the substances making the heaven that means earth you know is made up of different type of uh, material and uh, and 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 the heaven the other other part of uh, the universe is made up of some other material and hence the laws governing the motion of the heavens were different set of laws than those that govern motion on the earth what it means is whatever is we are, whatever we are observing in earth or whatever laws of motion are there here on earth it will be different from you know whatever is happening let's say on mars or venus or even sun and any other part of the universe that is what he said okay so, so uh, then uh, let's you know so what he was talking about is uh, this also that dynamics is the branch of physics that deals with motion so this is you can now see the history of the word dynamics so this is coming from that time and it was branch of physics that deals with motion was primarily determined by the nature of the substance that was moving. Okay, so hence, as you can see, if the substance is different, the laws followed or obeyed by that particular substance will be different. So that is what Aristotle is saying. So here you can see there is an apple tree and there are raindrops which are about to fall from you know crowd, uh, cloud. So let's say the the apple is falling from the uh, tree and let's say the raindrops are falling from the cloud and what uh, aristotle is suggesting is since apple and water are made up of different substances hence they will obey different laws of motion this is what uh, he is proposing at that point in time okay now uh, you can reason out why is he saying that and uh, what is the logical sense to all of that and today we know that all of this is not true but at that point in time, we can't expect that there are, you know, enough experimental tools or even for that matter, there was no methodology of, uh, you know, researching about all of that. Fair enough. So, uh, let's go further into it. So, what is uh, he is mentioning further? So, he is saying that a stone fell to the ground because the stone and the ground were similar in substance. So, that's what now he is saying. He is saying that a, a stone is going to fall on the ground because stone and the ground are of, of made up of similar material similarly smoke is rising away from the earth because in terms of the four basic elements and uh, what are those basic elements you would have heard that fire earth water and all these you know there are four basic elements uh, uh, which were there uh, in, in, during that time they used to believe that everything is made up of those four basic elements and now Aristotle is saying that it was primarily, you know, uh, the smoke is primarily air. That is the substance of smoke and substance of air 
is same and hence smoke will go towards air so that's what uh, you know aristotle is suggesting it, it is as good as saying that like is attracting like okay now similarly he the most contentious part of his uh, theory and today uh, or later on when galileo refuted it and when Arist you know our isaac newton also refuted it was that objects move as long as they are pushed that means if something is moving that means it is constantly being pushed okay and uh, today we know that uh, you know you don't require force to keep something moving right you only require to start and stop it you know if there is no friction it will continue moving right is it so this is what he uh, we know that but earlier that in that point in time when in 4th century bc his observation is that uh, the particle are moving or the objects are moving because a constant force is being applied onto it okay now he could not see that there is something called friction which actually opposes the motion and later on it was clarified by galileo okay now then came Galileo. So you can see, the, you know, uh, till 15th or 16th century BC, there is no much or not much development in terms of laws of motion. And this is the time when Europe is undergoing some kind of a transformation, when Renaissance is happening and you know, other things in the, in the European society where they are challenging all the beliefs, you know, that were established during that time. So Galileo comes and he challenges uh, Aristotelian laws of motion. So he's an Italian astronomer, physicist and engineer. So you can see that uh, during early days, people were involved in more subjects than what today we people are doing. And uh, he refuted uh, Aristotelian laws of motion. He said that whatever Aristotle is suggesting is not correct. And he asked this question that, uh, you know, if push is required to continue motion, then what pushes an arrow once it leaves the bow? So, you know, so what is that thing which is making the arrow go on continuously in one path? if the the archer has you know released the string or you know the the, the arrow has left the bow then who's pushing that arrow that was his question then, uh, he he proposed his own ideas and he said that uh, you know um, he proposed the theory of inertia which we now know as newton's first law of motion and he said that a body continues to be at rest or uniform motion because of its inertia there is something called inertia which keeps a body at rest or uniform motion so that was he he suggested and uh, you know this theory became became the foundation of newton's laws of motion we all know that the first law is nothing but which explains inertia right so anything which is at rest will continue to be at rest anything which is undergoing motion uniform motion it will continue to do so till an unbalanced force is acting externally on it so we will deal with them uh, in detail when we are taking up newton's laws but this is what galileo has observed so Galileo was very famous for his thought experiments. Okay, now what are thought experiments? So you actually conceive the idea. You don't really do it, but you conceive the idea, and with logic you try to prove the idea. So what did he suggest? He basically uh, uh, took the inspiration from a pendulum. He said that he said that if there is a pendulum and it is hanging from the ceiling. Okay, and let's say this is the bob and you take the bob in one direction and release it. So what happens? It starts swinging, isn't it? And uh, interestingly, it raises to the same level from ground. So let's say this is the ground level and this is the extreme position. So the bob comes here and the bob comes here. So in both the cases, the extreme positions, the height attained from the ground are same. That's what he observed. So he tried to replicate this experiment using a hemispherical bowl and uh, rolling a bowl on that small marble on that and he suggested that if this is the ball here if released it will come and it will stay here and it was common observation if there is no friction between the surface of the ball and the hemispherical bowl right now so this is what he said that if the bowl is there it will come back come to the same height right and it will stop there now he suggested what if we have a different setup let's say this kind of a setup is there and now we have extended the path of the uh, the bowl which is going to roll over and basically it's an extended hemisphere if you can see then here also he observed that the bowl when released goes to the same height right 
so it goes to the same height now it takes more time and it is you know uh, covering a larger distance but again because there was no friction he observed and later on you will also study under something called conservation of energy that uh, the potential energy is going to be same initially and the final or total energy rather is going to be same um, initially and finally now since the kinetic energy initially is zero in this case and finally also it is zero because it has attained the same height it is coming to a halt momentarily so hence the initial potential energy and final potential energy must be same and hence it attains the same height right so if there is no friction between the two surfaces then the bowl is going to come up to the same height now he you know stretched his imagination and he said now let's go to this kind of a setup this kind of a setup now what he what you can see is only the first half of that extended path for the rolling bowl right the other half is not shown in this diagram and imagine that it is infinitely long okay so if it is infinitely long then the bowl which is rolling will never be able to come to the same height it will continue moving like this right it is going to continue move continuously like that right so it will never stop or it is trying to attain the same height but it is never getting that height isn't it so it is it will continue to move so imagine that towards uh, you know a long distance after a long distance it will see the upward curve but then you every time it reaches the upward curve you take the up that curve away from the ball so this ball is going to continuously move isn't it that is what galileo observed through his thought experiments so guys uh, what is the summary of the entire discussion then so we have two stalwarts one was aristotle another was galileo and they are, they are around uh, what uh, some two centuries almost sorry two million almost two millennia away so aristotle is saying force is required to continue uniform motion and uh, he, but he could not attribute the slowing down of moving object to friction so he could not see that objects are slowing down because there is something called friction which is acting between the two surfaces while uh, galileo observed that force is required only to start and stop the uniform motion you don't need to apply force continuously to maintain the motion for example uh, a, a, a spacecraft which is moving in space right now for example you know you would have heard of uh, the, the spacecrafts voyager 1 and voyager 2 they have crossed the solar system now so they are moving on their own so they we don't need to really apply any effort to make them move so how are they moving on their own so that's what uh, galileo observed that if there is nothing to stop them they are going to continue with the same velocity and finally he said that an object slows down because an external force either friction or air resistance acts on it right so this is the summary of the two uh, you know people or the laws of motion given by the two people and then finally who came into the picture sir isaac newton right so it was him who took the baton from galileo and came up with his three laws of motion not only he gave the qualitative analysis or qualitative view of laws of motion he also gave mathematical view of that right so he explained the three laws using mathematics okay and while doing so he contributed significantly in the field of calculus so today we know that calculus he was one of the early contributors other being Gottfried Leibniz so these two people are known for developing the body of initial body of mathematics uh, calculus and uh, and now today we are using this subject in multiple other fields as well and interestingly Newton was born in the year when Galileo died okay that was the year 1642 so 1642 was the year when you know uh, uh, Newton comes on earth and you might be astonished to know that when he was giving this uh, laws of motion uh, it was a plague outbreak in london and because of which he had to go to his hometown and uh, there is where he had a lot of time to brood over all these natural phenomena and finally he came up with lots of lots of laws and theories in physics as well as mathematics i hope you got the uh, glimpse of the historical background of laws of motion now in the next uh, session we are going to discuss Newton's laws of motion one by one in a much detailed manner. Thanks for uh, having patience to go through all this and uh, keep watching. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Take care.